Hello, in my first video I introduced Markov chains, which are transition matrices used to play with probabilities um, from, say, one day to the next, from one event to the next. So if I had some probabilities for my starting position, um, in this case it's whether the weather's going to be fine or wet on day N, then if I want to find out what the probabilities are for the next day, I multiply by my um, transition matrix made up of probabilities. And because it's made up of probabilities, the totals for the columns must equal 1, 2 thirds plus 1 third is 1, 1 quarter plus 3 quarters is 1. And I can repeatedly apply this approach so I can move from day 0 to day n by repeatedly applying p to the n. And what we saw in the first video, we looked at moving, say, from probabilities, working out the probabilities for weather on Wednesday from the known position on Monday by multiplying by the matrix twice. And we created this P squared matrix. Now, if I wanted to go on in time in the long term, I multiply and just do multiple days. So on the hundredth day, P100 would be a point uh, 42857 and 0 0.57134 and those of you who are good at recognizing probab um, turning decimals into fractions will recognize that basically we're heading to three sevenths four sevenths yeah for both of these because these are the same going that way aren't they and therefore p infinity where we end up is going to be um, that's the matrix we apply and that has some interesting qualities because what's, what do our final probabilities, our long-term probabilities depend upon? Do they depend upon our starting position? No. Let's have a look at why. So if I started with a fine day, that's the one zero, and I apply uh, this P infinity matrix to it, I end up with my probability of it being fine as three sevenths someday well in the future probability of it being wet four sevenths and if I did the same thing with starting with a wet day my initial matrix uh, vector would be zero one multiply it by the matrix I still end up at three sevenths four sevenths so I've actually worked out something generally haven't I about the weather then the long term three sevenths of the days are uh, fine and four sevenths of the days are wet okay Let's see if we can connect that with stuff we already know. Let's think about it as an invariant point then. So how do I do an invariant point? Well, if I take my initial vector and I multiply it by my matrix, I get back to my vector, um, same vector point, yeah? Um, if I just rearrange these two lines in simultaneous, I get, if I write them as two simultaneous uh, lines there, top and bottom, I get these two equations you might have noticed or if you do a bit of a rearrange they both become the same equation one quarter of pf must equal one third of pw for the invariant point but there's something else that i know about probabilities is that i know that these two probabilities must add up to one so i needed a second equation in order to solve this i've now got two equations and i can now solve and find pf and pw what do I get if I do that? Well, I find that PF is 3 sevenths and PW is 4 sevenths if you solve those two equations. Yeah, by substituting one in place of the other there. And what I've actually got is some sort of long-term equilibrium or limiting probability, VE, which could be written as a vector as um, 3 sevenths, 4 sevenths. Okay, so that's useful. That tells us that everything uh, that... Um, that there is some equilibrium point. The next question is, do we head towards it? Well, the implication is that we do. How do we find that out? Let's have a look at this as an invariant line. So here's my invariant line equation, that my matrix times my line vector, that's x, m, x, must be some multiple of my original vector, x, m, x. If I write that as simultaneous equations, here are my two simultaneous equations. I've got two variables now, lambda and m. I'm going to eliminate lambda and get an equation for m by substituting the top equation into the bottom equation here in place of that. Excuse me, I want to have a white. There we go. And if I do that, I substitute into here, that's equation one, 
with the side two with equation one substituted into is that bracket what do I get miraculously I get a quadratic and I get these two solutions okay so what's happening now let's work up the full solutions um, and see what we get so if m equals three quarters so I'm going to call it m1 using my formula for connecting lambda and m I find that lambda one is one and if m if I use m2 which is minus one I find that lambda two is seven twelfths and if I rate those just as vectors like we did before for transit uh, trans, um, invariant line vectors I'd get a one and four thirds and one and negative one now we know that these must be probability vectors to work and therefore the total must be one so if I took my one and four thirds that's the same as seven that total seven thirds doesn't it so I'd have to multiply by three sevenths so I get my three sevenths four sevenths vector line don't I problem on the right hand side because if I add those two together I get zero um, because I've got one plus minus one so I can't really create a probability version of that uniquely can I okay now my next question is what happens to these vectors as the number of days as we tend to the future as t tends to infinity or n tends to infinity where if I took pv1 and did multiply by p to the n I'd know what my position was on the nth day so p n v1 well that's going to be the same as lambda 1 to the power n times v1 lambda 1 was 1 1 to the n is 1 so I would get p to the n times v1 is just going to be v1 so p infinity so as I go off into infinite time that one's just going to tend to v1 What's going to happen on the right hand side? Well, I've got P2, P n times V2, which is going to be the same as lambda 2 to the n um, times V2. And lambda 2, lambda 2 was 7 twelfths. And as I multiply that towards infinity, power that to infinity, that's going to tend to 0. So anything on this line is going to tend to the vector, the 0 vector. Um, that's quite interesting isn't it so this is again we've got the equivalent of a dominant vector here or line haven't we that's my dominant invariant line and that's my submissive one um, there we go so let's have a think about drawing this on a graph and what's going on so we can see us so I've got my two lines that I worked out um, for my m1 for, gradient was four thirds my multiplier was one so I could get a line y equals four thirds x and I've got a multiplier of one on that one um, and for my that's my dominant uh, invariant line my recessive one here is m2 was negative one so I get this line here my multiplier is seven twelfths there we go okay but I've got another line I need to add to my diagram here because what I'm actually drawing on the x axis is p of fine and on the y axis is p of wet and I know those two must add up to one so I need to add the x plus y equals one line and both of these properties must be positive so I only need that um, line segment here don't I and what can I think about now what happens to my probabilities well if I started off with the probability from a definitely on a fine day I start at the point one zero and if I multiply that by p I get v1 and p, p uh, if I multiply again I get p2 and all these points are on the line x plus y equals 1 and what happens in the end I end up at this equilibrium point ve there we go what if I'd started on a wet day well I'd have started here and I'd have multiplied by my matrix and I'd have got to there for v2 and then I got there for v3 and again I'd have ended up at this equilibrium point that's what we saw earlier isn't it and where is this equilibrium point well it's the dominant invariant line um, intersecting with my constraint that the probabilities must equal one and that's how we worked it out in the first place isn't it so what happens is well our probabilities over time tend to this probability here so 
what we are seeing is convergence, aren't we? That whatever our original probability um, was, whether it's 1, 0, 0, 1, or it might be that somebody, if they were doing some sort of Bayesian approach, they may have made an initial prediction that it was 1 fifth, um, 4 fifths, if they did something like that, so they had that point there, then the same thing would happen, it would converge on there, wouldn't it? Whatever. So, in summary, what have we got? Here's my summary page. Here's a Markov chain. It's a transition matrix with probabilities. So each of these columns, the total is one. And I can find my limiting or equilibrium probability upon which this chain will converge by using the invariant point approach that VE must equal the probability matrix times VE. And in this case, I would have found that that invariant point was 3 sevenths, 4 sevenths. So uh, that's 3 sevenths probability that it's a fine day, 4 sevenths that it is a wet day. And we can use this approach with Monte Carlo to solve all sorts of probability uh, profiles and in Bayesian probability. So best of luck. luck.